Good morning, everybody. Come on in. Uh, have a cup of tea. Or maybe not because it's kind of a gruesome, gruesome thing to have tea with today. But we are going to discuss fungus gnats. And there's lots of remedies out there. There's lots of ways to get rid of your fungus gnats. But I have some tried and true methods. So here we go. <laughs> and it's nice to have you joining me. It's nice to, to hear the comments. I'm enjoying talking with everybody and getting to know you. And uh, I think that's one of the most important things I enjoy other than the orchids. So anyway, I made a few notes because I don't want to forget anything. But fungus gnats are similar to fruit flies. Um, they look, they look like a mosquito, but they're only about an eighth of an inch long, and they have long legs. And they are not strong flyers. They don't, they don't do well in a wind. So if you have a little fan, that'll help deter them from a certain area. So that's one little way, but not the complete way. So uh, the most awfulest thing I can think is um, when the adult lays, I think she, I think I read she lives about a week, but when she lays eggs, they like to go somewhere damp where there's decaying organic matter. Now, whether that's an orchid root that might be inside your pot and is mushy, or uh, they will feed on that, or uh, just the decaying bark if it's got that far or the moss or whatever it is if it's decaying that's what they want they want the moist and humid environment so with that we have everything we need to know to get rid of them so um, because the adult fly is alive only a week but if she goes in your plant and lays an egg 300 eggs from one fly. So go figure, if they're flying around, can you imagine how many or where they are hiding? So you do have to find that spot. And the reason uh, I feel like qualified to talk about this subject is because I think it wasn't this year, I think it was last year, the year before, time goes so fast, but I went out to the greenhouse. And my citrus trees out there are about four or five years old. And uh, I water them all winter and, and, and they in the spring get a lot of water, so it was always moist on the top. Because whenever I went out there, I watered them. So, um, Anyway, it was so awful because I could see things uh, bumping around on the surface. And it was the fruit fly uh, larvae. It was awful. And I even got some in a jar and took them to the local uh, nursery here to find out what they were. They, they're kind of a clear body with a little black shiny head. Almost a see-through body, but you can see stuff inside. It was awful. So anyway, I knew I had to get rid of them. Well, I'll tell you, I haven't had them since. So the first method I'm going to say, if it's your house plants that uh, they can be in any house plant, if they're one that gets water, they particularly like African violets, by the way. <laughs> so watch out. But anyway, we're we're going to discuss that a little more. But I put a layer of play sand about an inch thick out in the greenhouse because in the spring you're keeping your little seeds all wet and that just, they, and I put out those yellow sticky things everywhere catching the flying ones because I had to keep my little seeds moist but doing that they were also finding uh, lots of humid places. So. Once I put an inch of sand over the top of the fruit trees, to this day, nothing. And, oh, this might be a good time to thank 
the person, and I kind of went back into some of the comments trying to find who it was. But I said, well, I got rid of the fungus gnats. How am I going to get rid of all these ants? They keep coming in the greenhouse. They crawl all over the floor. They go up and they, they put scale around on your tree and then, then the, they, they feed off them and they uh, make this sooty deposit that's just terrible for the leaves. And somebody out there, and thank you, thank you, thank you, it worked. They said, get Dawn uh, dishwasher liquid. I put it in a sprayer with a little water, and whenever I seen them crawling on the ground in the greenhouse, I sprayed that there. And it didn't, it, it didn't go away right away, but in time, all of a sudden, for the last couple months, no ants. So it was a, I had to keep it up because we're talking a lot of ants. I mean, out in the yard, there is a lot of ants. They got little holes in the soil everywhere. And so, yes, so maybe in your house around an edge or if there's somewhere you know they're coming, spray a little of that. It worked. It worked. So back to, <laughs> I get sidetracked. Okay, so uh, we know what they are and we know they're a nuisance, the fungus gnats. Now, they love... Um, they are very attracted to CO2, and that's why they fly around your face. And if you're having a glass of wine, they like wine too, so they'll be around your wine, your beer, your face. And besides being a nuisance that way, they're, they're going to do damage if left over time. Uh, they're not going to bite you or anything, but they're going to bite anything they find that's decaying. So, we want to get rid of them. So, there is another thing called G-N-A-T-N-I-X. I think it's a fancy sand, but it's a type of sand you can go and buy just for getting rid of gnats. But really, it's the weight of the sand on the surface of your plant. And it dries quickly, so as far as the surface of the pot, you don't have to worry. But uh, any saucers, any dying leaves should be kept all not there because that's dying material, you want to get rid of it. And any wet saucers, make sure you keep them clean. So, uh, containers of water that you've got sitting around um, for humidity around your orchids, put a tiny drop of dish soap in there uh, you can use Dawn. <laughs> and what it does is those little rascals are so light they can walk on water. But if you put a little drop of dish soap in there, it breaks the surface tension of the water and they go under. So uh, if you're going to have that water sitting there anyway, you may as well put it to some good use. So, um, okay, I think we did that. Now, we want to get rid of all the stages. Um, there's the egg, the larvae, the pupa, the adult. We want to get rid of all of them because if you don't get rid of all of them, they're going to keep coming. So, hydrogen peroxide. Now, you can uh, get hydrogen peroxide in a big bottle like this and the mix is one cup of 3% hydrogen peroxide and three cups of water in a spray bottle like this. This isn't straight hydrogen peroxide. I even use it for different things with the orchids quite a bit. It will not harm your plant. It, it's, uh, um, it will kill those ugly little larva things on contact. So, um, that is one cup of 3% hydrogen peroxide, three cups of water in a spray bottle. Now, let the surface of your plants that you think uh, are the culprits dry off, and then once a day for a week or so, spray the surface. Now, if you get some on your leaves, this will not hurt them. It will... Uh, uh, 
it'll turn into a substance that is going to be of no harm at all. But it will kill those things. But to make sure you got them all, you'll have to keep doing it for a while. Um, um, once a day for a week, probably. Um, now, the other um, method I use, I use this when I have trouble. I don't have trouble anymore, but I still use this sometimes when I think um, I have scale or something. Uh, I will use that. But I've been canning peaches and I've been canning tomatoes. So what have, what have I had? I've had fruit flies and, and in with the fruit flies probably some fungus gnats because they will come in your doors. Uh, this time of the year they're trying to get in the house. So um, I have these. These are awesome. They're, I think they were sold for wasps. And I have some out in the patio. I have a little stove out there so I do most of my canning out there. And this time of the year when I do not have any orchids in bloom, I keep one on my counter because I often have fruit, t tomatoes, peaches, something out in the counter which attracts these things. So I keep one on my counter and I keep one out where I'm canning. Now, if I had gnats, which I haven't had right now, they would be near my orchids. But one, one thing I do want to say is um, if you're using apple cider vinegar in your trap and something else with it, then you don't want to put it near a flowering orchid because it could drop its leaves because it is, uh, it's like uh, the uh, over ripening uh, products that, um, what is that gas? The set, no, um, methane gas? No, no. <laughs> All right, I've done it again. I forgot. But the gas that comes off of decaying fruit or ripening fruit um, will make your orchid drop its blooms. So whatever you're using for baiting these, you don't want to put it near your flowering orchids. So um, now I'm going to show you up close. What I have in both of these is just apple cider vinegar. Some would say the Mother Earth one that's natural works better, but I haven't noticed. I, I did try, but for the money I didn't notice any difference. So I have apple cider vinegar, but um, besides the apple cider vinegar, you need some decaying matter because probably the apple cider vinegar may not do the trick otherwise. So I was canning peaches, so I threw a peach in here. But a piece of banana would work, a banana skin. Uh, you get the picture, something like that. Just try and get it in the bottle. Now I'm going to show you a close-up. Which one? Now I'll show you a close-up of how many fruit flies I'm catching. So I, you know I'm telling the truth. I, I'm at the dining room table, so I didn't want to... Okay. Let's see if you can see them flying in there. Yeah. And there's the peach and the apple cider vinegar. And the same with this other one. Whoops. <laughs> we could get messy. And don't let that stuff... Uh, <laughs> I suggest when you want to clean them, take them out to the holes outside or tap outside or you're going to have to be really quick somewhere because um, they will start to have maggots inside this. So you want to keep them clean. Uh, you keep your eye on them, and these are see-through. Um, this one never had a lid. The it had a cork lid. I think they come with a cork lid. And it was different colors of wore-off paint that I scratched off because these came from the thrift store, naturally. And this is an old decanter top because the cork didn't work. And you can find lots of neat things to use as lids for these. That there is a... a lid off of something I picked up somewhere. So anyway, that is another method, but you have to put some organic matter in there besides the vinegar to have it work. And don't place it near your flowering orchids. Yes, it works. 
it's great and it doesn't look bad and if you didn't want to look at them you could um, paint the surface you know something artistic so something that goes with your kitchen you could be really you know this long winter coming or if you're somewhere where it's winter now there you go <laughs> get ready for the for the season okay so um, Keep all water bowls with a dab of salt if, uh, of soap if they're just there for the humidity for your orchids. Pick up all dying leaves around your plants naturally because they will like that. Okay, the other little method, and I tried it, didn't stick with it, but I tried it, was uh, raw potato slices on the surface of the plant you think they're in because they'll come up and feed on it. The little larvae will come up and feed on it and then you throw them away. Now, uh, I think that you have to go a little deeper than that, but uh, there we go. So, now we've got the sand, we've got the vinegar, and wine works really good too, but then you have to part with some wine. <laughs> wine but it does it does and I haven't tried beer but I've heard beer works too so <laughs> there you go and um, the hydrogen peroxide and uh, so what you do is I have a stick now you want to find out which is the culprit because a few years ago that's this is how I found out you go around and you stir the top surface of all your plants and if you see little flies flying out, that's probably one of the pots you should be concerned with. And you do this with every pot. You can just go to your orchid pots, move the bark around, but to every plant, orchids or not, that you have, you do this and you'll find which ones they're hanging around. And then when you know which ones are hanging around, then you can do this and hopefully get them? Or is it a symptom that something's not good in the pot? Maybe you should repot it. And uh, that's what I've done in the past. And then I put the sand on because it was a house plant causing the major problem. And if it's damp enough in there and breaking down enough, they will go in a side hole too. So remember that side holes underneath <laughs> give it a good spray not just the top so um i think that's all i want to say about them it does work and i'm going to take you on a little tour of what's going on with orchids before i say goodbye and i hope you're having a really good day and i'm always glad to hear from you and uh it's fun so off with our little tour Okay, now because it's been dropping below 50 degrees out here now, sunny in the day, smoke is gone, but uh, temperature, I never put them back out. But what I am doing, and you could do if you don't have a cool place for your uh, orchids, and so that they cool down, for uh, about 10 degrees at night for a couple weeks so that you get spiking. And you can see I've got my windows all cracked. So at night when the temperature is dropping, they are also getting that cool drop because I wasn't going to put them back out again. So I set this for now. I've got some in this corner here because I don't, um, I put a little humidity thing here. For them and this is just until the heat from the west windows uh, goes down enough that I can put them all in the windows so here we go I still have my nursing stations and the ones I'm keeping a close eye on are here and then over to the window now this beautiful one is getting a new leaf there. It's just amazing. This one is so amazing. You will see soon I'll be getting a smaller, smaller road cone painting it. Uh, winter, winter project. 
So this is Moon Glow. Uh, and we have some new leaves coming right in here on this one. Everything's sort of getting new leaves. And I keep these in the window, but later in the day I'll be uh, taking them out because it will just be too hot and just putting them on the shelf in front. So, uh, yeah, lots of new leaves coming on these. And the one flower that was on the Herella retrocala has died back, but there's more coming. There's one right there. And there's some more coming in there, I see. And remember, I don't know if you were listening, but I said, if this one gets a leaf, I'll be happy. And something is coming in here. And so, this is exciting because this has not had a leaf since I first got it. So, yes, they're happy in their three-pronged sewer pot. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting new leaves. They're doing good. So, um, things are pretty good in the window. And we'll head off to the other room. Okay. Because here we have the slipper orchid. And it's still spiking. I turned it around. I was not sure if I wanted to, but I just wanted to start bending the other way a little bit. So we're still waiting. Things are looking good. And the, here I put deep purple with the long monopodial stem that most people cut off. Well, I put her in this pot, you remember, video two ago, and new leaf coming here too. So that's a good sign because this is the oldest orchid I have. And uh, that's a good sign. I'm quite happy with that. And <laughs> it's a little fountain I put together here. I added some pieces, but it was at the thrift store and all broken. But we managed to get something out of it. And here's the other slipper hork. This one's not spiking, but it's doing good. So I'm not using the window yet, but come... When the cooler days start coming, all of them will be in the window for lots of light. And I have one here too, under my ZZ plant, and my Z baby ZZ plant that I started from leaves is really coming along. So <laughs> that's it, and thanks for joining me, and uh, have fun with those gnats, okay? Bye for now.